Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Quick, episode 152. Today, we are going to be having another question and answer episode. All of our lovely, lovely patrons have been flooding our Patreon the past 24 hours with questions for this Q&A episode. And if you've been following us on socials, which you all should be, um, we've been using a lot of these as clips. So us, we got to lock in as hosts. We got to we got to remember that these are going to be clipped up by Mateo. Cam learned firsthand from Baby Reindeer that this part... Mateo has been a great uh, experience of like PR training and like how words can be twisted. You know, you can take a little clip of someone and make it seem like they said something way different than they actually did. So it keeps you on your toes. Make sure you're, you're, you're at the top of your game at all times. But we have a ton of questions to get through. Let's go through these. And um, yeah, thank you to all the patrons, especially our executive producers, Stefan Johnson, Sean Morales, and Stefan Nieberick, but all of our patrons for giving us these questions for today's episode. But let's go ahead and dive right in, starting off the bat with Jordan Gag asking if you could interview Quentin Tarantino, what's one question you would ask him? What's up Jesus. with your feet, man? What do you like about feet? <laughs> Mount um, Rushmore of feet. Go. Mount and then Rushmore. ask ask Tarantino that. I have <laughs> no idea. That's a really difficult question. Uh, I'd probably ask him if his 10th film will actually be his last film. Or just like, yeah. where did he get it from? Like, what? When, yeah. did, when did that become a thing in your mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll do that. But then I he's already guaranteed been asked that, so you'll be like, ah, right. yeah. Maybe have you uh, sought, been have you sought out therapy? Yeah, I'm not too scared to ask him about the feet. The who's your Everyone's favorite? Too afraid. Get me an interview with Quentin. I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'll do it. Like what, <laughs> the uh, European football, they get the golden boot. Like, get, what's Tarantino's golden foot? Golden need, foot. What's the award go to? Margot Robbie. <laughs> um, WMC Garner asks, what's your favorite movie from your least favorite genre? So I feel like it's easier to figure out what, think of what your favorite, least favorite genre is and what will be your favorite movie from that. I think mine. I don't know if it's maybe, horror for sure. Maybe Shaun of the Dead. My number. Or Shaun of the Dead or, or Willy Wonka for me. That'd be the two. Because comedy and musical? Horror, no, horror comedy. I, horror oh, comedy is a weird one. I don't love a lot of horror comedy. If we're going, well, if we're going to civics, if not, let's just go musical and let's say Willy Wonka. Okay. I don't know if it's like a genre, but like I don't love like period pieces, but like obviously hey, uh, history is a genre, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. like but Amadeus is like a very good movie, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know, like I don't dislike like uh, Shattered Our Boy Nalbus. Like I don't dislike Wuxia. I just haven't seen enough Wuxia movies. But I would say my favorite is Hero. I think I think Get Out's probably my favorite horror, but it's also like light horror. I just I really don't like mm -hmm. horror, so I feel like maybe maybe a Halloween like, but that again, it's all like a slasher. I I prefer, mm -hmm. um, and even that those I don't necessarily like, but um, yeah, definitely not a horror guy by any means. Yeah, my least favorite genre is definitely action, and I'd say Mad Max Fury Road is probably my favorite pure action film. So oh, yeah, there's my answer for that. Shout out Furiosa coming soon, uh, coming out like tomorrow for people listening to this on the day of release. Mm. Uh, Next question, which is a good one because I, I don't even know what your guys' answers are. I feel like we haven't chatted about this in a while, but Joe BW6 asks, What's your favorite first time watch of the year? Of so this far. year? Yeah. Oh. But it doesn't have to be a 2023 movie. Uh, it no, shouldn't no, be. It shouldn't be. I, I, to make it interesting, or, no sorry, movies from this year. 2024, I forget yeah, yeah. what fucking year it is. Uh, my answer is definitely Dune Part 2, but I'll try to find a non 2024 release. I'm going to say either i've actually got a three i'll say either cure which i've watched three times the new world which i believe i watched three times or amadeus one of those three i'd probably say i'd probably say hero which i just mentioned i'd probably say lost highway because i did watch that for the oh. first time this year um I'm like I'm trying to quickly go through my diary and see like what if I have service I can see. Yeah, probably probably hero and probably um uh lost highway would be my lost, top two. Lost unless midway like, for real. <laughs> unless I'm like forgetting something. Um uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, my favorite first watch of the year is Charlie Kaufman's Synecdoche, New York. I've been watched this for so long, I need to watch it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have an answer. So say Dune two, Dune part two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever that works. Yeah. Next question. Everything else has been a rewatch. Stefan like Nieberick. Stefan Nieberick asks, 
who are two actors that you would want to go to and or who are two actors that you would want to go and have dinner with? So dinner with Adam Jewel. Sandler. Adam Sandler. As Jack and Jill? No. No, not a duo. I love Adam Sandler. I just feel like he's such a cool guy, you know? Two actors uh, I want to... My thing is, like, I be like, you could easily say, like, Ryan Gosling because he'd probably be, like, such a yeah. great guy to go out yeah, with. Yeah. But, like, if I'm if I have the opportunity to get dinner just the one time, like, I want someone that's going to, like, I don't know. Like, I want to, like, question someone. Like, someone I have, like... I like Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Ryan Gosling's my like, answer. Ryan Gosling would be Emily, fun. Emily Blunt. Blunt. Emily Blunt? I'd like probably Emily go Blunt. so basic, but, like, Emma Stone and Christian Bale probably right now. Okay. I feel like Christian Bale could be rude. I'd be kind of scared of him, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'd be frightened of him. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a difficult one. I, yeah. Hmm. Tyler, you say he wasn't trying. Oh, maybe like Adam Sandler and Nick Cage. I feel like that'd be a really interesting conversation. Too. <laughs> that'd be a wild, wild. Uh, Charlotte dinner. Tilda, well, Tilda can be there also. So. Mm-hmm. Two actors. So I have one in my mind, and I'm trying to think of a good pairing to go with them. Uh, honestly, I would go. Well, the, the one for sure locked in is Steve Carell. I think Steve Carell would be oh, the last to have really dinner cool. with. Yeah, and I think he'd be really nice, too. He seems like a really nice dude. And then I feel like to pair him up, I, I would go Ryan Reynolds, which is weird because Ryan Reynolds is so far down my like favorite actors list. Like He's not even up there at all. But I feel like he would just make you feel good at a dinner. Like He would gas you up, glaze you. Smart guy. He's good. Yeah, smart. Probably a good person. Yeah, there's a chance he brings Blake Lively, which is always a plus. <laughs> so there's a lot of pros of inviting Ryan Reynolds. So. But I feel like he'd be, I feel like he would gas you up. He'd be the King Glazer. Um, next, we have um, Brady Miller asks, "Who is the best written character from any coming of age film?" Wow! So oh, you got a single Morales, coming of Spider-Man. age. Yeah. If we're including superheroes, yeah, I'd probably also go Miles. Uh, Pete Davidson, King of Staten Island. Stop. <laughs> so good, man. Uh, um, I'll go. I'll go. Uh, yeah. Go on, come. It, did we count Goodwill Hunting as coming of age? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Of so, whale hunting. Um, whale hunting. I'll go Sean. I'll go Sean from uh, This Is England. I thought you were going to go from Sean of the Dead. Yeah. No. <laughs> George, you you almost famous, I feel like, right? Isn't that coming I was going to say almost famous. I was thinking even like Francis Ha. Like, I love that character. Mm-hmm. Um, or even um, uh, Charlie from Perks of Being a Wallflower mm-hmm. would probably be up Ooh, there. Um, yeah, I think if you gave me like one pick and I was including superhero movies, I'd probably also pick Miles Morales though. Outside mm-hmm. of superheroes, I think Will Hunting is my is my answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, just to add something different, I'll, I'll go Chiron from Moonlight. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, shit. Um, this is a fun one that I don't think we've answered ever before. Uh, Rye Paulson asks, what's your favorite piece of movie memorabilia that you own? Uh, my... The one I bought recently, the, the original Eyes Wide Shut, like big poster they used in the mm-hmm. theaters. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Or the Apocalypse Now um, lobby card I got recently as well. Probably one of those two. Dune popcorn bucket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you actually have one though? Yeah, I do. Have it? Oh, nice. Really? Damn, I'm mad. Nice. Oh, Huge. Can you, us, can you give us a tutorial? Yeah. <laughs> How to use Dune popcorn bucket. <laughs> Uh, um, this the this Henry Cavill poster, probably. Yeah, the Henry Cavill yeah. Poster. yeah, signed by Cavill. But like, what do you consider memorabilia? Because one of my boys, one of my friends from my birthday in college, got me this like really fat Marvel book, and it just has every single Marvel character ever created, and it has like their rogues gallery, like all of their like statistics. It's it's insane. It's like media memorabilia. You know? Yeah. So I have I go the, to the Cavill poster. I have the it's packed away right now while we're in the interim parents basement. Um, but I have the proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Like I, I my sister got me that and I built that. Yeah, you showed us that before, yeah. right? No, that yeah. one's peak. I like that a lot. Like, do we consider Legos to be memorabilia or no? Yeah, I, I think got plenty so. of Legos. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's about a movie. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'd say movie. I'd say memorabilia is anything, or movie memorabilia is anything related to a movie that's just not like the actual disc that's, of the movie. Yeah, itself. yeah. 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 Have you guys seen the George, especially you? Have you seen the new Lord of the Rings um, Lego that's just been released? No. What is it? 
The, have you not uh, seen it? The mount? Have you not seen it? No. With the gates and it's Sauron with yeah. the eye and stuff. Oh, it's yeah, nice. It's like, it's it looks cool. nice. It's like 8,000 pieces. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm now noticing I'm no movie memorabilia. Like, I, don't, have, well, I have some, but it's like stuff I've, I guess, like, I, behind you. Yeah, but they're all like from Redbubble, like $8 posters. Yeah, but it's still cool. Like, it doesn't really I'll go, I'll go my Professor Snape wand from uh, Hogwarts that's, that, World that's and Harry Potter. Memory. That's a cool one. No, that works. I, I'm just saying, like, I, I don't think I would actually include it to be that cool because it's like a twenty dollars little plastic wand but don't really have much to <laughs> oh you doesn't mean anything it's cool <laughs> um okay let's see cam cam good megalopolis tweet <laughs> yeah I've just <laughs> what was it i didn't see it, it, was, it was you, know, you know that picture that's like dudes will sit in this room and be happy and it's just like the small tv <laughs> <laughs> i was like pumped for my megalopolis uh, cam today um Lachy, Lachy 13. Sorry if I mispronounced that wrong. Lachy 13. Are there any specific movie tropes that you hate or love to see play out in a movie? So let's go, let's go with the hate. Is there what's the specific yeah, movie I'm trope that you hate? Um, I hate when that it's two characters who are speaking and they'll just and it's like a massive plan, and one of them will say there's like no time to explain and just ruin yeah. everything. But there's absolutely time to explain. Yeah. It really annoys me. I hate yeah. that one. Any any coming of age film where the parents make this five star breakfast and they just quickly grab like a piece of banana. Oh, on that's a good there. one. Because they're that's late for school. It's like a platter. It's like everything breakfast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One thing crazy. And they'll grab like one piece of toast, <laughs> shove it in their mouth, and then like grab their yeah. back. Yeah, mom. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's like if my, if my parents are cooking five star <laughs> meals for breakfast, I'm, I'm waking up five more minutes early. Like what, I'm waking up half and I'm gorging on that. Just a yeah. buffet. Crazy. Yeah, an annoying movie trope that, like, uh, at this point, it's just like funny. But like, when the bad guys just happen to like suck at aiming guns, yeah. Like, I like things. shout out Star Wars. I like the hackers. Yeah. You know, it's like the I'm hackers like, when they just the type frame. a bunch of things into the mainframe. It's so <laughs> dumb. Or when people, or when like people use a game, like people are playing like video games and they're so it's obviously old. not playing video, they just like tap mm. the controller. That was mm. great. It's so ridiculous yeah. how some of these movies are like so easy to get. A, it's like so easy to get just right, but they just. I mean, some are intentional, but some are just clearly just the, the silliest yeah. thing in the world. Yeah. Where you can oh, tell someone's never held a video game controller in their life. What yeah. trope I actually like really like, which I think is like overplayed. And Seth, maybe you like this because they do it a lot in The Strangers Pray at Night. Like when there's like a slasher movie kill in a horror movie and they yeah. play like fun, upbeat techno music. I they like do that. that a lot in Strangers Pray at Night. Yeah. And they I make like it like they, they, did, they, they even did it in X, like the yeah, first. They did first kill yeah. in x was like the old lady was doing it to like I some 80s that. song it was like so much fun yeah like no, that's a trope i actually like yeah i like in a shitty action movie where someone survives something that's just absurd or 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 in like a superhero movie when like someone dies and they're like but or like batman when like someone clearly dies because batman like throws him off a building but he's like no he'll break his legs you dropped him from five stories Batman. he's, he's dead <laughs> like uh What's the like latest Fast and Fury those. movie where he he drives his car off a dam? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that this is the or most recent. That that's the most yeah. recent. Yeah. Yeah. Where they do something absurd, like in the last one, where he connects to some sort of is it that he connects to the um, crosswalk in between two mountains, like his car does. Come your bikes gone quiet. Yeah, going up the end. Uh, it might just be my service, but like in the Fast and Furious, they connect to like uh, I think it's a bridge across two like platforms and he swings across yeah. like moving his car and lands on the other side i think just the trope is just fast and furious movies that's i was gonna say what's the trope is that something that's common in movies no, <laughs> just Man, i hate when cars repel them. yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's fast and furious being superhero movies actually yeah, yeah <laughs> kind of a exactly. similar vein of like un unrealistic action it's like whenever i feel like so many times the one that's coming to mind is joker but it happens all in so many times where someone's like running in the middle of the street and just gets leveled by a car We'll just like get up and just keep running right away. It's like, no, dude, you'd, you'd be cracked on that pavement. You need a little time to recover. I get you have adrenaline, but at some point it's a little unbelievable. One of my one of my favorite tropes of the Real Talk podcast is when I say a movie's bad and then I have it rated a four and a half out of five. <laughs> that <laughs> is a good one. Good. That yeah. happens fairly often. Big fan of that. Um, okay, next question we got. Okay, Jay, nothing more than just Jay, but Jay asks, 
Which director do you guys think has had the most significant impact on the film industry in the last 20 years? So let's say in the, the last 20 years, 20 2000. We'll say that they say filmmaker or just anyone in film. Just who has made the most significant impact in the film industry in the last 20 years? So let's say they couldn't have been active before the year 2000. So last 20 Does this years. count in terms of what no, they've done outside of film as well? What? Just anything like, related to the film. Oh, so I would say Scorsese because of his films. Well, he was he's active lead. before 2000. No, we're, we're people the last 20 years. If they're they're active in big names before 2000, then... Oh, I thought you just meant in the last 20 years anyway. No, no, no. no yeah, yeah, no. Just, we'll, think, we'll stick to the last 20 years, period. Answer, answer's got to be Christopher Nolan, I think. Um, he got active pre-2000. He made what? One movie? I think yeah, following was like 99. Was 99. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, so, George. I'm, no so way. Got you, man. I mean, he's come on. The dude, dude pushed the boundaries of superhero filmmaking, changed the game. He literally got the Oscars to change the way they number their best picture nominees. Say, he pushed the boundaries of science fiction. Even he, say, he just took a biopic and turned it into the most insane experience. Like I would say either Nolan or James Cameron. Because the I was going to say Cameron too, but he was before yeah. 2000 as well. Oh, yeah. Shit, what am I doing? Uh, yeah. I, I'd, say, I'd say... Yeah, I'd say Nolan's definitely up there because just yeah. purely on the impact. If you're talking so when, about people who've started since, let's say 99, Nolan's case, it probably has to be in terms of just overall impact, I would say. All the yeah, Russo brothers. Shout out you guys, man. Yeah. Russo, Russo brothers. brothers. Yeah, Russo, yeah, Russo brothers. brothers. Yeah, Russo brothers. Yeah, Russo brothers. Yeah, Russo Shout out you guys, guys, man. When George said Christopher Nolan, because I was thinking like, he pushes IMAX filmmaking so far forward, but so does James Cameron. But I'm like, ah, before 2000. Then I was like, yeah, saying, Christopher Nolan changed the superhero game. So did Sam Raimi, but it's like a Sam Raimi before 2000. Yeah, so yeah Nolan's a good catch all. Yeah, yeah. Another one that I saw, shout out, looks like a movie podcast. I They were mentioning when they're talking about A24 a few episodes back when they're talking about Love Lies Bleeding or something. But Loki, Ari Aster, because Hereditary, like they were mentioning like how that's like the movie that like exploded A24's brand. And now obviously A24 is like the most buzzy brand name in What's Hereditary film, film? right now? The, hmm. that was well, the one that like pushed them into the next was it? i didn't realize how well i did to be honest when it released initially mm -hmm. um uh, i also on that name like just for horror i feel like jordan peele i'm just jordan trying to peele. think of most recent like actors but i feel like he pushed the horror genre a little farther than where it was mm -hmm. obviously wasn't a a i think uh, i think well the general conversation how many people speak about asta peel and eggers now just right. in general related to like the genres I feel like they had a lot. A twenty four had a lot of popular movies pre hereditary. They did, but a lot of those are popular now. Like the witch, for example. I guess I I can't necessarily, but like Moonlight was an Oscar winner pre uh, uh, hereditary. That was twenty fifteen, wasn't it? Twenty sixteen. Uh, Ghost Story, which I guess Ghost Story is not big. Uh, Florida Project, Lady Bird's pretty big. The Disaster Artist, not super big. These are um, all like ten million dollar or less box form. office type movies, though. Yeah, I think Hereditary was right. like, it has a mainstream. Yeah. I remember people speaking about Hereditary a lot, like just general audience, like general friends and stuff when it released yeah. in 2018. It was like a big what thing. Are, Ex Machina was big too, but I feel like no one associated Ex Machina with A24 though. Was it big on release? Maybe it was. I mean, yeah, it definitely was. People was it? really okay. like that movie. But I think Hereditary like, started this cool. whole like A24 horror genre. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, like yeah. a popular thing. But I could be wrong. This is just a conversation they were having. No, no, I get that. I get that. Um, but yeah. Uh, what, what, if break, out, what if I threw out Spring Breakers? Kevin Feige for most influential. Yeah, that I mean, you're not wrong. He's changed the I way mean, movie is. theaters, box office, and yeah, yeah, he's changed everything. He's changed the way people look at the theater going experience. He's causing a ruckus with Russo Brothers versus Scorsese. Like, <laughs> I mean, he's, <laughs> he's he's at the forefront of all of this. <laughs> He did, I mean, have yeah. a, he did have a production assistant role on every Volcano single movie that comes out and immediately so... gets compared to an MCU movie. Yeah, you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I just reread his question. He did say director, but I, our conversation touched on directors yeah, okay. and everyone else. So whatever. I didn't, I don't think I read director when I first started off, but no, it was a good conversation. Um, let's see. Next up here. Trying to find a good one. Listen to Billy's album so bad right now. Um, well, let's see. Nicholas asks, What's your hottest take that you haven't shared on the pod before? Hottest movie take, I feel or like any I've take, everything. Yeah, we I feel like we have everything. mostly, but is there anything 
We're closeted. Spider Man Far From Home is better than Spider Man 2. Yeah, no, really? You said that before? That, <laughs> I've definitely said, said that. that before. Plenty. I have no, I don't know. I say I, we, we've said like most. I'm sure we have some. Because if it's like such a big thing, there's an obvious chance that we would have mm -hmm. said it. It will be the smaller ones, like just the, like, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of don't what. Care about. Because if I, I don't was... care about it, it's not that hot to take. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I've like rarely been vocal about my like dislike of oh. Reggie Macbeth, but we just talked about that on Monday's episode. So, uh, Gone oh, with the Wind is a piece of shit. I fucking hate that. Film. You've mentioned that. You've mentioned that. Yeah, you uh, talk about that a lot. You have uh, mentioned. I don't talk mentioned. about that a lot. It's not no, a lot, but you've mentioned it a couple times. You have said it. Oh, I don't have any. If if not for hereditary, is not as good as people say. Uh, I swear you have it. Replace five, replace that word with midsummer, and I'd agree. No, midsummer is midsummer's mid, midsummer's better be than hereditary, but I no, midsummer is mid. It's in the name. Midsummer no. is so mid. And Bo is afraid is Bo mid midder. Bo is afraid. Is have afraid have to change it. I don't <laughs> have any. Honestly, I don't have any because I've already said them all. Yeah, I have no yeah. idea. The Dark Knight's yeah. good. Yeah, uh, Dark Knight's good. Ian Hirsch asks, "What's a film that you think could have been great or better if it was directed by someone else?" Loads. Wow. Um, That's a hard oh question God. to think of. Just to think of like an example from maybe this year, I guess. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, maybe if like if Denis did the Avatar movies, game over. No. Maybe. Yeah, that'd be so maybe. much worse. Maybe. No, <laughs> um, maybe if Denis really... did Avatar The Last Airbender, take the source material and actually do well with it. Maybe. If Luca directed Rebel Moon. Uh, if Luca directed Rebel, uh, Moon, honestly, yeah, Rebel yeah, Moon. yeah. I mean, I think anyone could have done that. <laughs> He'd have a bullet. If, if anyone else directed <laughs> any of Luca's movies, <laughs> terrible. Uh, uh, oh, oh, easy. If the Russo brothers did Killers of a Flower Moon, <laughs> <laughs> would have been so much. Imagine better. if they did the Jesus. <laughs> I can't. Let me try to think. So, um, yeah, this is actually a good question. If it's it's really, really, it's, it's, these are need the prep time. time. Yeah, these need prep time. Like these um, are hard. To, to I'm hey, trying to you're think not of Batman. Like a... Answer on the fly. <laughs> I don't. I had prep time. I solo this question. <laughs> uh, uh, someone who would be better for Civil War? Maybe. I was just trying to think of that. Who's a director that's not afraid to be controversial and really lean into it? Which used to be Alex Garland, but then he was going. Kind of, I feel American? like I feel like the Safety brothers could have done a good Civil War, like a very like anxiety kind of environment. Yeah, they've never been like political guys in their film though what if Greta i'm trying to think who could really like punch the bomb do you know what did. i think fall guy i heard that can <laughs> what did you say he said if greta gerwig did oppie and uh christopher nolan did barbie <laughs> if they switched roles how would those movies look <laughs> not good jesus not man. good I think someone Bill someone Bill. surely could have done better who's good at doing like romantic comedies and like, action and stuff then fall guy then david yeah. leach yeah, uh, someone could have done much better with that. Could have done better with it. No, why is he? No, I don't, I don't I actually think, think, I actually think David Leach was a perfect person. But I do person. think he could have done better. Um, I'm trying to think of like franchises where a new filmmaker took over and it kind of ruined it. Like my first one was like, what if, um, like what if J.J. Abrams did the Last Jedi instead of Ryan Johnson? Like the Last Jedi this. was really Last good. Was good. Okay. What if, what if they kept going with? What Ryan if they kept Johnson. going with the Ryan Johnson? <laughs> nah. Actually, change it to Rise of Skywalker. Wait, who did Rise of Skywalker? JJ Abrams. JJ. Okay, JJ. there you go. If Ryan Johnson did Rise of Skywalker, what, that's what of. dumb idea. Well, I guess I can't say that because if I'm Ryan Johnson like that, did La Rise of Skywalker, that's my answer. <laughs> uh, this is a hard question. Yes, what if George hard. Lucas did Empire Strikes Back? It probably would have been Jesus worse. Christ. It would have been so bad. <laughs> yeah, that would have been so bad. <laughs> For sure, it would have been worse. Uh, he was smart. Though. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. uh, Matt Reeves did Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I think that's Dude. Good you know? Okay. I was, yeah, yeah. There you go. You that's the perfect beat point. me by two seconds. I was just about to say that. I just threw on my diary. Oh, oh, full, oh full, my God. Uh, full trilogy. What if mm. he came back for Kingdom? It probably would have been darker. No, nah, Kingdom's good. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think Kingdom is good, but you, if it's not a five, it can get better. Oh, come if James Cameron had done Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, that world, I like, mean, like, we I wouldn't I, have seen it for 10 more years, true. but yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> true. But let's just say, theoretically, he was working on it for a while. Here's, he here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Tell me this is crazy. I think Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, and now we're on like Zoom. Don't say it's better than Avatar 2. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. 
Uh, but beside the point, we can ignore that. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, like, I think it looks as good as it will look. Maybe not as good, but I think it's at the point, it's at the level of Avatar. I don't just mean visuals, though, to be fair. I just mean so, and I think that's where James Cameron brings it, is he's going to nail the visuals. He's not no, I, th I think he's, it. I think in terms of a storyteller within blockbusters, I think we saw the Avatar 2. I think he could have done it really well. And saying that I really like him playing it, so no, no shot on Wes Ball, he did a really good job. But I think if Cameron would have done it, that'd be crazy. I really here's, still. here's a take. What if what if Chad Stahelski did a Marvel movie, like any of them? It's difficult because like when like, a director's maybe, doing a Marvel film, they're hired hands most of the time now. Yeah, but like I'm they thinking like much, like what if he did like one of the Captain America movies where they're like more grounded in like reality. Like the Winter Soldier, if that was yeah, just like the Winter Soldier, Soldier, and they're like more like spy espionage films as opposed to fighting though. I guess it can get, it can get better. It can get better. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but no, that's not a not to a Winter Soldier. It's, yeah, yeah, that's not a that's not a knock to Winter Soldier at all. But like, I don't know. Like, imagine I that. I, I agree. Of... I just don't know how much control he would have. You know, yeah, that's the yeah. issue. Yeah, that's fair. Or like, give um, like imagine <laughs> if uh Owen Patnod did one of the Insidious movies. Yeah, I feel like that up. would. Dang. Yeah. All right. True. This, this is a good one too. Dylan Chip asks if theoretically every working director dropped a movie tomorrow with no marketing or trailers. Just every any working director, every single one dropped a movie tomorrow. Which one's the first one you're going to be watching? Christopher Nolan. This is just going to be a favorite director working. Uh, yeah. Chris Chris yeah. I think not like Adam question. McKay, but I don't even know if that's a true answer. Probably Christopher Nolan. No, probably Denny. Probably Denny. Adam McKay is a good answer for the fact that his movie is going to be less of like a theatrical experience. That could be like, because the thing, every director is dropping on the same day. So you first wake up and you're like eating breakfast, like pop on the Adam McKay while you're getting ready for the day. And then you like head out for the <laughs> Nolans and the Spielbergs and the... Yeah. So every, that, world. Every, I also every, think it, it would depend what like if like if tomorrow Denis drops Dune Messiah and Christopher Nolan just drops like oh no now we're getting into it. like if Christopher Nolan just there's no title there's no title no nothing it's like the you don't know yeah, Nolan, you don't know anything nothing, you know nothing yeah, you I'm know going anything. I'm sitting in the Nolan theater no I'll question. go I'll go Scorsese obviously I'm just, sitting in yeah I'd probably go probably Nolan maybe Chazelle is in number yeah. two oh Chazelle would be a good one. Yeah. No, no, I, I would after, wonder. After, after, Chazelle might be up there because after Babylon, you got to see what's like, what tame movie is he going to come back with? <laughs> what jailhouse rock movie? Yeah. Is he <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Ferdinand 04 asks If beans on toast is not available, what would you have for breakfast tomorrow? <laughs> the shot beans on toast. Uh, <laughs> If why is beans on it, toast available? Yeah, why would beans on toast? That's like the, those are my favorite tweets where it's like <laughs> it's like if the fall guy wasn't available, what's Ryan Gosling's best movie? <laughs> I've seen you do those before. Yeah, so, it, that basketball. was yours, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Should we just say a perfect breakfast then? What's your perfect breakfast? I mean, I think I, egg I, sand, I, an egg sandwich would be like my I don't love eggs. Like, like a, a on a bagel? Egg. Yeah, on a bagel, like a bacon, egg, and cheese on an everything bagel. That's I'll, why. Like I'll have an everything bagel minus the eggs. That's not fine. an egg guy, not an egg guy. I don't mind them, but, but I like if I'm gonna have a choice of my favorite breakfast, they're not included, you know. Okay. My mom made some waffles this morning, and I like I like Waffle. homemade waffles and uh and sausage waffles and some cinnamon rolls and good. some chicken, fried chicken and waffles. Uh, yeah. Waffles over pancakes. Waffles yeah. over pancakes. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But pancakes waffles get too doughy and dry after a while. Waffles mm -hmm. have the syrup cups, you know. True. Mm -hmm. with waffles yeah. True. Yeah. You guys, how do you guys rank French toast, waffles, and pancakes? Waffles, pancakes, French toast. No, 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 no. no. It's waffle, waffle, backwards. waffles, French toast, pancakes. Yep, Seth, French toast. Seth is right. French toast, pancakes, waffles. I'm no, sorry. not waffles yeah. last. No. I mean, those French out. toast is the worst one. Like French toast is no, the biggest no, range. No. Widest range. You can make some shit French toast if you just That's use some fair. basic ass bread. True. French toast assuming, is down there. assuming they're all in their prime. Right. Oh, they're in their prime. Yeah, they're all in their prime. Thank Waffle with French toast. Oh, there we go, Seth. It's huge. huge the the they're all good, though. You know, like, why debate this? You know, they're all great in their own mind. But, you know, waffles <laughs> up. Uh, why can't two, three kings exist? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coexist. That's what I'm places. locked into right now is bagel with cream cheese, smoked salmon, and capers. Oh, nah, a bagel dude. with cream cheese and salmon goes, f I f that is hard. Like, salmon is not, not quite, not like, the most breakfasty thing in the world because you could like. I think that. so. I think but that's a breakfast. Anything with a bagel counts as breakfast. No beans and toast by any means, but it's all right. Yeah, yeah. beans yeah. on yeah. toast, not on toast. On Sorry, toast. It's, it's on. no, it's no for our other country listeners. No Vegemite and toast. It's Vegemite. 
Australia. We have we have Marmite here. But... I gotta look what Vegemite is right now. Uh, apparently, like everyone, I've, everyone seems to have never tried it. Uh, tried it for the first time, like throws up. Oh, uh, like, good. I like Marmite a lot. Yeast extract. Why do you want need? What do you want an infection? <laughs> Nutritional yeast is pretty <laughs> good though. It tastes like just like Parmesan, pretty much. No, I, I like I like Marmite. I don't have it, but it's quite nice. It is nice. Okay. Um, that's kind of that's kind of it for the the, the Q and A. Uh, a lot of a lot of great questions on here wide variety of, of answers we were given here but shout out to all the patrons of course for giving us all these questions here um we'll see which ones mateo decides to slice and dice into clips and what our takeaways were because anytime i talk on real talk podcast it exits my brain immediately after it leaves my mouth so i anytime i watch clip back i'm like oh i didn't even know i said that but fun good time tomorrow we're gonna have a draft of the best action scenes of all time Friday, we're going to be doing our Patreon exclusive review of Mulholland Drive. So make sure you check out our Patreon in the description down below to be there for that. Um, as always, shout out to our executive producers, Stefan Johnson, Sean Morales, and Stefan Niebrick. And we will see you all tomorrow in a real quick episode of 153. Peace.